Welcome back. This is episode number seven of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. In the last tutorial, we built a circuit with an LED and a resistor. Let's see how to control the LED from the Raspberry Pi using Python programming. If it's not done yet, you can power on your Raspberry Pi and just connect to it like you did before. For example, here I'm using VNC. Then you can open Sony and we will write some Python code right here. And first of all, we are going to include a Python module named GPIO0. Uh, so GPIO0, okay? That's gonna be the Python module that we want to import so we can control the GPIO for the LED. And how to import this module? Well, previously you saw that we did that, import time, for example, okay? Because time is a library that uh, we wanted to use. We are also going to use it here, so I'm gonna keep it here. You just write import and then the name of the library. Then we can add another import after that or even before that. Okay, the other doesn't really matter. And for example, we could do import GPIO zero. Now the thing is when you do import library, that's gonna import the whole library with all the functionalities in this library. And as we will see with Python sometimes, it's better and we just want to import one specific functionality from the library because GPIO zero contains a lot of things for LEDs, push button, and well, many different devices. So if we want to just import, for example, the LED from uh, GPIO zero, then we can just write, and notice here I used uh, the word from, we can just do from, okay, there's a keyword from, GPIO zero, import, and then uh, there's gonna be LED. So here we just import the LED because that's the only thing we need from that library. Okay, so that's a kind of a good practice. And if you want to import several things from that library, you can just add a comma and then put other functionalities. Uh, let's just test that it works here. I'm just gonna run that and you see we don't have any error. This means that it was found, okay? So the GPIO zero is already installed for you with Raspberry Pi OS. You don't need to do anything, it's already installed and configured. Great, so now we can initialize our LED and how to do that, well, it's very simple. We're gonna create a variable here, let's call it LED lowercase is equal to, and then we're gonna use the LED here, so uppercase LED, we're gonna open and close parentheses, and inside that, we're gonna need to put the GPIO number. So on the image, you can see, we used the GPIO number 17, so you just put 17 right here. And that's how you initialize an LED. So under the hood, what it will do, and as you've seen in the previous lesson, it will set the GPIO 17 as output. So then we can control it. Then how to control it, so how to say that we want the state to be high or to be low, then you can do LED, so you're gonna use this variable which in fact, uh, more technically, is gonna be an object. Okay, but I'm gonna keep the word variable here. So you're gonna use LED dot, and then you have a function inside the LED uh, functionality here, LED dot on to turn on the LED. Okay, it's quite simple. And as you call a function, you need to put some parentheses. Okay, every time you call a function directly, you need to put the parentheses. Here we don't have any argument to pass to the function, Okay, but we still need to give the parentheses. So LED on is going to turn on the LED. So it's gonna set the state for the LED, so for the pin to high or 3.3 volt. And then you also have LED dot off. Okay, so it's quite simple to understand. And this one is gonna turn off the LED. So it's gonna set the GPIO to low or basically close to zero volt. Okay, so what's gonna happen if we run this program well, we will not see anything because you ask to turn on the LED and to turn it off right after it. So you will not see anything or maybe just very brief flash. So what we can do is we're going to use this time library here to do time dot sleep. And then let's sleep for one second. OK, so this we have used already. We're going to turn on the LED for one second and then turn off the LED. And that's the end of the program. So let's run this program and let's see what it's gonna do. And you can see the LED is turned on for one second and then turned off. I can run the program again, so I click again, and we have the same behavior. 
Now there is one thing I want to show you is, okay, let's say that we only have this line. So I'm going to comment. You see the comment is quite useful here. So I can comment it and then we can uh, put the code back again later. So for now, we just set the LED to on, so to high. And let's see what's going to happen. And as you can see, the LED is turned on and then it stays on. Okay, the program has finished, but the LED stays on. And you might think, well, it's quite obvious we didn't ask to turn it off. But uh, actually, in this GPIO zero, there is a what is called a cleanup mechanism. OK, because when you finish your program, you want to basically reset all the pins to their default state and default mode. And basically, the default uh, mode for all the pins is input. And this is just a simple safety mechanism, because if you leave a pin as output and then let's say you plug a push button in it, you might create a short circuit. So no need to worry about this for now, but you just need to know that if we run a code like this from Thony, the GPIO zero is not going to do the cleanup correctly. And I'm just talking about this now because later on, we're gonna actually use the terminal to run our programs. And when using the terminal, we won't have this problem. Okay, so don't worry if you didn't really understand what I just said now, it's gonna make sense when we use the terminal and you're gonna see the difference with what we did right now. So we have our LED on. I'm going to come back to this code. LED on, we sleep for one second and then LED off. Now, what if you want to do this not just uh, one time, but maybe two, three, five, ten times, or even an infinite amount of time? Well, you're not going to repeat this code an infinite amount of time. You can use a loop. So for example, let's say that I want to simply do a infinite while loop. And I just want to say that when I start the program, the LED is going to blink until I stop the program. I can do while, and then how to create an infinite loop. Well, I'm just going to put true, while true. So true is always going to be true, which means that we are always going to uh, continue executing the loop until we uh, here, until we press on the stop button. And so what I need to do here, you can see I have to put that with an extra indentation. So I select all the code and I press tab, which means that this is going to be in the while loop. And it misses something because if you read the code, what's going to happen? We turn on the LED, we wait for one second. Then we turn off the LED, we go back and we turn on the LED. So we don't wait here before LED off and LED on. So if you run the code like this, you will see the LED on all the time because there is, there is no uh, delay here between LED off and LED on. So we need to add another time dot sleep with let's say one second as well so it's gonna turn on the led wait for one second and turn off the led wait for one second etc and let's run that program here okay and you can see now the led is blinking and if i want to stop the program i can just click on stop here okay so here i stopped and you can see it was uh, off but now let's run it again and let's stop it. Now you see I stop it when it's on and uh, the LED stays on for the same reason as I told you before, because the GPIO zero is not cleaning up correctly here when we run the code from Thony. But later on, as I told you before, everything is going to be fixed with the uh, terminal. So you have learned how to control a LED with Python and you can see with this GPIO library, it's very easy to do. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.